So I only have 10 minutes left for, for the last bit, which is probabilistic soft logic, which is also in the same spirit as Markov logic networks, but you know, quite a di different flavor. It's a, uh, another kind of declarative language to specify uh, a probabilistic graphical model. And the, the main features are, as I promised at the beginning, there's uh, soft is usually taken to, to mean um, some sort of fuzzy value. So, so it's not a probability, it's just a, some value between zero and one where uh, zero means no, no, no membership to, to, to whatever property you want and one is, uh, is total membership. So the, the typical example is if I say um, the difference between probability and, and, and fuzziness would be take the concept of tall and I say, okay, what's the probability that one of you guys in, in, in the audience is tall? Then you know maybe I'll have some statistic and you'll be okay. You know there are, in this in this class in particular there are uh, quite a few tall people, so it's 0.8. Um, and the other one would be given one person, I would say this person is 0.8 tall. What does that mean? Does it mean that there's an 80% chance that they're tall? It means that they are pretty tall, right? It's they're not like I wouldn't say that they're tall, tall like one tall, but you know, it's, it's more than 0.5 tall. So another, another typical example is, um, what if I told you that one bottle of uh, liquid has uh, poison and um, it's 0.1 poison or 0.01 poison. If it's a probability, that means that there's a 1% chance that you're going to drink poison if you drink the liquid. Whereas if it's a fuzzy value, it, it just means that the, the liquid in there has 0 0.01 membership to the class of uh, liquids that are poison, which means it's probably safe to drink. Wow. Uh, quite different. Um, so again, dependencies as in MRFs are encoded via weighted first order rules and this has uh, support for similarity functions in aggregation. So if you look at the literature on, on PSL, the S in PSL originally meant similarity because this was developed, I think, around 2008, 2009, um, with a very much centered on reasoning about similarity of entities. So, um, you know, if, if you want to do schema mapping, like I was mentioning in, in the introduction, uh, then you would say, oh, these, these two things are pretty well aligned, so they're probably the same, that kind of thing. But then they, they generalized it, now it's called probabilistic soft logic, and it has more, more applications in that. Um, and it has efficient um, inference of the, of the MPE kind that I mentioned before, I think for, for Bayesian networks. The interesting thing is that these soft values and combined with, with the way in, in which they, they are mixed with the logic, they can just do inference on, um, on a convex polyhedron, which means that it's very, very fast. It's very, very tractable. So an, a kind of application for this is Typical application is something like this. So it's just to be colorful, you know, we have um, people who are voting Democrat, people who are voting Republican, and some people who we, we don't know, but we know the relationships, you know, we even have strength of these relationships sometimes. And we want to infer, you know, how the others might vote. So we have PSL programs are they have ground atoms, they have, these are just regular logical atoms soft truth value assignment. So for instance, the strength of the friendship between Carla and Emma and between Bob and Dan, and also weighted rules. So this is kind of like the same kind of thing that we had for MLNs, except that here we say, if, um, if a person lives um, in, in a certain area and the majority of that, no state, I guess it's a state, if, uh, if if a person lives in a state and the state votes majority for, for a party, P, then probably that person will also vote P. 
this is a rule that has weight 0.3. We also have propagation rules, which you know refers things like if spouses probably prefer similar parties or the same party. And if you are two people of a similar age, then and, and one of them prefers one party, then the other one probably prefers the same party. And also partial functions like this, like constraints. So you can't have the, the weight assigned to Democrat and Republicans can't be more than one because one is, we can say, I guess the opposite of the other. Um, it's less than or equal to one, I guess, to, to consider third party voters. And another pretty powerful thing is uh, sets. So like you can say that here, a, a person will prefer the party that is um, to the degree that their friends prefer the party people, right? All right, so wrapping up, um, this is just very similar to what we, we saw before. It's the same kind of thing. We don't have time really to go into the details of how they get probabilities, but it's very similar to the Markov random fields, they have this distance from satisfaction part, which is pretty uh, interesting. Each rule has a weight, as we saw. This is two, two kinds of ways of, of doing it, one, one softer and one, one uh, harder. And we have another normalization constant, similar to, to the one that we had before. And, um, and interpretations are just assigning uh, truth values to everything. So, Distance of satisfaction is um, intuitively, you know, because this is all soft logic, we have to say, we have to generalize the concept of satisfaction. So if we have if body then head, um, then we have, um, this is satisfied if and only if the truth value of the body is less than or equal to the truth value of the head. So remember this generalizes the fact that false, um, false. Uh, if you have a false body, then then you have a, a false, a, a true, a true implication. So it's if you consider, if you look at it as a promise, if body then head, then if the body isn't true, then my promise is, is still fulfilled because I promised you only in the condition, only in the scenario where the, the body would be true. So the way they do this to to compute the, the combine the different values of the conjunctions and disjunctions with a, a infinite value logic called the Lukashevitz um, operators, which are simply just you know doing simple math with this. So the and is the max between zero and the sum minus one. The or is the minimum between one and the sum, and the negation is just one minus the value. You can do this recursively with, with you know however and many. Um, operands you want. So this is, I think, the last slide. Um, PSL programs, as I promised, ground out to special kinds of Markov random fields called hinge loss Markov random fields. So the, the reason they're called hinge loss is because the potentials are hinge loss functions. And this is why they're called this way. This would be like a hinge point. Um, and they are log concave, which means that a, a best, because there might be more than one best interpretation, can be found very tractably. And again, as I promised in the beginning, this in this case is a continuous, um, a continuous uh, variable uh, Markov random field. So it's not discrete, like I mentioned before. And so that's why here there's an integral instead of a summation. Okay because there is an infinite number of interpretations, ways of assigning numbers to these, to these atoms. So the details, uh, like I mentioned, are, are out of scope, but um, those of you who are interested can look at this. Um, this is like the, the, the reference for this, but there are also older papers, which you might see where they, they still call it uh, probabilistic similar, similarity logic instead of um, soft logic. All right, that's it, just in time. Thanks for your attention.